NASCAR's new and wacky short track package was tested today at Richmond. Was it a success? Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up, everyone? My name is Jet. Welcome back to the episode of Inside Lines. Hope you're having a good day. First episode of August, and we got some interesting things to talk about. First up, let's talk about NASCAR and marketing. Now, there have been many good things with NASCAR ever since really since the new era this the post Brian france era there's been a lot of good with nascar but there's one thing that i've always had an issue with and that is marketing of the sport in my opinion nascar's marketing although it's gotten be better it's way off it is nowhere near to where it was in the 90s i know even though i wasn't born in the 90s i know based on how people that lived in the 90s you saw nascar everywhere nascar commercials everywhere nascar merchandise i'm pretty sure there was even like Tony Stewart and Baba Labonte sponsor themed playfish. I mean, you any if if there was any type of product, I'm pretty sure NASCAR had a logo or something on it. Nowadays, you barely see any of that stuff. Well, it looks like NASCAR's trying to change that. According to Adam Stern, NASCAR is in talks about investing millions of dollars into a new driver incentive program that would start in 2025 and reward the sport's leading spokespeople for promoting it more per sources. One possibility is a ranking-based approach. Now, the reason why the program would be set to take place in 2025 is, of course, that's when the first year of the new TV deal comes into play, so you want to start out really fresh. Now, why? What's the purpose of having this type of program? Well, Adam Stern on his article in Sports Business Journal explains. The aim is to grow the sport by incentivizing and motivating drivers to do more promotional work like radio or TV interviews, in-person appearances, podcast hosting, social media posting, or autograph signings. Drivers are not NASCAR employees because unlike franchise stick and ball leagues, NASCAR teams do not own the league. But this program is a recognition by NASCAR, privately owned by the France family, that the sport needs to be marketed better and that its most prominent and influential spokespeople should be at the forefront of that effort. Drivers are already obliged to do a certain promotional appearances for their team, sponsors, and the sanctioning body, but NASCAR leaders feel that the level of activation and buzz in the sport can and should be better, and that this program can help accomplish that. Now, the program would be funded through NASCAR's new TV deal rights that, like I said, will be scheduled to take place in 2025. With one person familiar with the ongoing talks said that this program could start at $20 million, which is a lot however that number could be expected to grow with the 2025 tv deal expected to be a lot more than the current tv deal right now nascar makes around 820 million dollars per year with fox and nbc that figure is expected to go up for the next tv deal the structure of the driver incentive system is still being worked through but one idea is a rankings based approach with credits awarded throughout the season for services performed and then money paid out at the end of the year the system would be based on aspects like time spent promoting nascar as well as the level of engagement and influence a driver has. Now, this kind of correlates to an article or a statement that Jeff Gordon, the vice chairman of Hendrick Motorsports, said, I believe, earlier this year, and how he wanted his Hendrick drivers to push the sport more, be out of their comfort zone, be or show their face more to the public eye. I do want our drivers to reach just slightly outside their comfort zone when it comes to the media and opportunities, just so that they can open up more doors for their own brand and it help us sell sponsors. And I think it helps grow the sport. If you're willing to put yourself in places people don't expect you and you want to be there, the traditional sporting events and country music concerts are great, but let's take that a step further. That's what I'm trying to encourage our guys to do. Now, if you want to talk about the most marketable drivers in all of NASCAR, there's really just a few of them. Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon. D they're really, that's the only three. Not even today's drivers, like Chase Elliott, the most popular driver. He is the most popular driver, yes, but you would have no idea. When Dale Jr. was the most popular driver, you knew. Every, even if you know nothing about NASCAR, you knew Junior, Junior, you knew Gordon, you knew Earnhardt, you know those guys, but... The only driver that I'm pretty sure if you ask any any random person on the street, name a driver, they may say Bubba Wallace and maybe Kyle Busch, but that's about it. And so I think it's a good incentive that NASCAR is trying to push drivers and teams to say, hey, you know, give them a reason to really push the boundaries to get their drivers out there, you know, promote the sport more. I saw there were some drivers like Ross Chastain. I think there was, I think, uh, Chase Selling. I think another driver was on the Pat McAfee show. Things like that. That's good. But you got to do more than this. I mean, 2004, 2005, 
Jeff Gordon did Saturday Night Live when it was actually good. And that did so many great things for NASCAR because it put NASCAR in a spotlight that no, not, no one was used to seeing. Gordon didn't even want to do it because he was scared to death, but you know what? He forced himself to do it and guess what? Everything went fine. It gave the sport a lot of promotion and that's what these drivers have to do. I don't know if it's because maybe of corporate America, they want these guys to be like robots, like don't say anything, just drive and you know, don't try and stir controversy or anything like that. But it would be so refreshing to see drivers out in unusual, I should say unusual, in just different landscapes of mainstream media, whether it's on the news or on like on national news or on other sports shows like Chase was on college game day, uh, I think one or two years ago, things like that. But push your sport more, promote the sport more to people that may not know what's going on with it. A big reason why NASCAR was booming in the 90s is because their marketing was off the charts. You saw NASCAR commercials, NASCAR merchandise, NASCAR drivers everywhere. And that's how you get people watching. You got to push your guys. We are no longer living in the days of built it and they will come. You want people to show up? You're going to have to make them show up. Give them a reason to show up. There's a lot of things that NASCAR can do to make that happen. But I think having this program to give drivers and teams a reason to go for it. Yes, it's money. I mean, it may not be for the right reasons because let's be honest, if anyone's doing it, they're probably more concerned about getting that bag. But at the end of the day, you're bringing promotion. You're bringing noise, buzz to the sport that you want people to tune into every Sunday. So I hope this comes into fruition in 2025 because I feel like this would be a great thing for the sport to really be able to push the drivers and teams. Hell, maybe even sponsors of the teams, you know, or, you know, let's say Trackhouse, we get Bush Light, Trout Chastain. Do something about that. Generate some buzz. Get some eyeballs popping. We saw a few years ago with Domino's, what they did with Denny Hamlin. People that do nothing about NASCAR knew Denny Hamlin and his PJs. Things like that gets people talking. Nowadays, it's extremely rare to see a NASCAR commercial outside of a NASCAR race, which is another thing I want to touch on, that if you're going to promote your driver, I mean... Here, let's let's use this for example. Let's say Ally Alex Bowman. You want they have this commercial that they've shown on races, but I've not once seen uh, uh, Ally's Alex Bowman commercial outside of a NASCAR race. That's an issue. That's not going to bring in new eyeballs. People that are watching the race, yes, they already know about Ally. They already know about things like that. That's not going to do anything. You need to get new people that know nothing about the sport and get them invested into it because people that are watching NASCAR already know Alex Bowman. Already know Ally. You're not going to gain anything from this. You have to go where other people are going. You want to get different types of people. You want to get newer people into the sport. You have to go out there and get them. You can't just expect them to show up. And finally, let's talk about our main story. And that is NASCAR's new wacky short track package. There was a two day test conducted at Richmond Raceway yesterday on Monday and today on Tuesday. Now, six drivers participated in this test to try and see NASCAR's new way of conducting short track and road course racing so that you can get more passing drivers aren't staying put for a longer for a long period of time compared to in years past with the gen 6 car there was a lot of action on the road courses and short tracks it was by a mile the most entertaining type of racing of the entire season now in the next gen car it's usually one of the worst now this is what they were testing on the left is the new splitter and on the right is the current splitter now the left splitter nascar's idea is that they are testing an underwing that is designed to create lift when the car is in clean air but additional downforce for the cars that are in the wake or in traffic theoretically giving them more of an opportunity to pass and allowing them to get real close to each other, not have any of that dirty air disturbance and things like that, and track position not be that big of a deal. It was an interesting uh, creative idea, and they put this to the test. Now, they did it on Monday with the already reduced downforce package, you know, the one that we have when it's just a two-inch spoiler. They had these drivers for a good chunk of the test on Monday perform single lap runs before having themselves a practice race at the end to really see what it's like in action. Now, when you look at the cars, it looks so funny. Here's a picture of Harrison Burton's number 21 car with the front nose lifted into the air. Now, obviously, this is so that when the car is out in front of clean air, creates lift, when you're behind it, it basically goes down to create downforce. But 
I'm sorry, am I the only one that gets NASCAR inside line vibes from this one? If you played inside lines, the Talladega setup, and you didn't have this on your car, you would be toast. Now, according to Bob Parker, at the aftermath of the first test on Monday that there was some improvements, there were some passing, but the leader was still a second or so ahead of second place, so not much. It wasn't a, a slight gain, but nothing big. It wasn't a grand slam according to NASCAR by any means. However, on Tuesday, they were going to try something different. Now on Tuesday, they were going to have the proposed new softer tire that was supposed to debut at New Hampshire. However, rain pushed that to today for Richmond. So NASCAR tried a different change with the air package plus the new softer tire compound. This new air package was this completely removed the entire diffuser. Everything, the whole diffuser is gone. There's a look at from the back end of the Toyota car, completely gone with now a four inch spoiler instead of a two inch spoiler. The front underwing remains the same with the new splitter. Now, according to people at the test, it was again, another little gain. It was a, it was a good game, but again, nothing major, nothing big. Now it was good in terms of handling because yesterday with the two inch spoiler, the jars that were racing, it was, out of control. They literally couldn't race. It was too loose to be able to race properly. With the four inch spoiler now, they have a little bit of extra downforce. Drivers said it didn't feel different compared to Monday's test. However, this time around, they were able to move around and actually start making runs. In fact, Noah Gregson shed some light on his thoughts after the test session. He said, quote, I really liked the no diffuser. I thought it raced good. I thought we could move around. It felt more like a rental go-kart race where you could go to the top, get a big run and cross the guy over and just mix it up. Guys were changing and just figuring out how to get runs. It was a lot of fun from behind the wheel and that was what that treaded tired the last set of races which i personally thought was the best and the most fun you really had to search around and find where your car was good you could follow pretty well tucked up right behind somebody it felt a little bit more like a supermodel racing short track racing where you could stay right behind the guy and move him up out of the way and drive underneath him I thought there was a lot of gains there. Now that is some good news to hear. I don't have any statements from William Byron or Christopher Bell, the other drivers at the test session, but based on Noah Gregson's uh, comments after the, that, uh, that test session, pretty good. It's an improvement. Obviously not where we need to be or nowhere close where we want to be, but it is still an improvement. Now NASCAR has stated that they will test removing the, ref the diffuser completely, like what they did today at Richmond at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the oval following the Indy race weekend on the road course to test it what it would be like at a more narrow racetrack. But even though that's the case, if anything comes from that, more than likely it will still be a focus on just the short tracks and road courses in 2024. Now I know that there is a lot of people out there when they were seeing all the stuff that there was some gains, but not where they needed to be. Once again, the, way the topic comes up, horsepower. Why not add horsepower? Now NASCAR, now NASCAR themselves stated that the reason why they're not adding any horsepower to things is because they felt that the current horsepower package is more attractive to, to, uh, to new manufacturers that want to enter into the sport. And they said that the current rules package would number one, cost a lot of money and also time to create, develop, properly handle all the parts uh, for the last two races of the short track or of this proposed short track package. That's why, according to NASCAR, that's why they're not adding any horsepower. However, Denny Hamlin he had some thoughts on this. Now he was responding to things that he would do to make short track racing better. And he lists off three things. Number one, add a hundred horsepower. Engine guys said we could do it quickly. Number two, get rid of shifting. Number three, make the tires wear out, not just lose grip because of heat. Aero just isn't likely the fix when we are at slower speeds like short tracks. Now when responding to a fan, Denny posted three more marks, but the second one is the most important one I think. It's definitely possible. We have enough data now on all tracks to come up with a proper drop gear slash RPM combo to combat shifting. And that's another big issue is shifting on the short tracks. When you're shifting on short tracks, you're preserving tires. You're, you're keeping the life of, of tires compared to if you just let it sit in fourth gear or I guess now fifth gear. So yeah, I mean, NASCAR is saying it's too much. Denny is saying that it's not a problem and that they have data to be able to get rid of shifting. Uh, it's, it's a lot of politics going on. Let's just say that a lot of political drama going on between NASCAR and the drivers and the organization. Um, now to recap of the test session itself, that the tires on today's session in Tuesday, made a big difference. Driver said that it laid down a lot of rubber on the racetrack and the removal of the diffuser made it more forgiving on entry. It was not as severe, the dirty air was 
compared to having it with the diffusers. So that's good news to hear. Lots of rubber being laid in, laying down. Drivers can move around. Drivers can make runs. And there was not a lot of dirty air compared to the car with the diffuser. So those are some positives. Again, like obviously adding horsepower, get rid of shifting would help a lot. But this is good news considering considering what NASCAR was trying to get with this new package. Obviously, NASCAR said that they will conduct more tests on it, but they like what they saw. And some of the drivers had really positive comments about the test session on Tuesday with the removal of the diffuser and the different tire. But yeah, obviously any major changes, I think when it comes to short track racing won't be done until 2024. I think with 2023, what we saw at Richmond, Martinsville, that's what we're going to get for Bristol, Rich, uh, for Bristol and Martinsville later in the year. I mean, nothing's going to change in those two races. So and nothing's going to happen in 2023, but I am curious to see what type of changes they'll make for 2024. But what are your thoughts on those two stories about NASCAR's new marketing program and the latest test session at Richmond? Are you positive on the changes that are being proposed about NASCAR's short track problem? Or do you have any other suggestions on what NASCAR should do? Let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, my name is Chet from MDK. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.